Yunjin Hunters will be Yunjin Havers once 2.4 comes out. But most if not all of you watching probably don't know about this, especially about Yunjin's design and character. Hey guys what's up Aru and I took some time to look for the 20, that's right 20 things you didn't know about Yunjin and her design. First and foremost, I'll be going through the pecking opera along with her animations and how it relates to its traditional practice. Later on, I'll be focusing on Yunjin's visuals which is going to be a mix of both pecking opera and the gothic lolita Japanese trend. So let's not waste any time and start off with number 1. The pecking opera or jingxing opera is the most dominant form of Chinese opera which combines music, vocal performance, mime, dance, and acrobatics. The origins of which from the Hui opera way back in the late 1700s. Or what is now called Hui Ji, this type of theatrical performance was originally staged for the court and only made available to the public later. These staged performances were once only done by male performers with a strict ban on both female performers and audiences from joining and viewing. After some time and effort, female performers and viewers were eventually allowed. Peking Opera consisted of four character roles called Sheng, Dan, Jing, and Cho. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Along with intricate costumes and props that made their performances elegant and extravagant to watch. Depending on the troupe and the specific play, it can be action packed with flips, twirls, and prop throwing, or elegant and fluid like the narrative songs done by vocalists accompanied by smooth movements and rhythm. At number 2 is the iconic and what some might call surprising vocalization of Yunjin. The way they sing in Peking Opera involves breathing while vocalizing their respective tones and notes, with breathing techniques that help keep the song from breaking like stolen and exchanged breaths. Exchanged breaths being slow and unhurried usually done when the song is accompanied by another vocal or an instrumental pause. Stealing breaths being a quick and sharp intake of air all while maintaining their pose and stance with the song. As you could guess, they steal breaths mid-song without breaking their flow of vocalization. Speaking of rhythm and movement, Yunjin's attack animations are a combination of both her stage performances and the traditional Chinese martial arts of weapon combat. Merging these together and you get what the devs themselves call spear flourishes, which are akin to real combat and also denotes such graceful poses with unique musical cues after each animation. Continuing on with her animations, the hand gestures that she makes in both her trailer and combat show off what the real Jingxing performers use, which is what's known as finger patterns. There are multiple finger patterns used in Peking Opera, but the finger patterns that Yun Jin uses in combat usually has her hands open, which is called the unfolding palm. This is used by male characters appearing in battle scenes. Yun Jin uses this because, of course, she's in battle. Another hand gesture that you would see from her trailer is the orchid finger. This pattern emphasizes the femininity of the character in the play. Another gesture that she uses is called pointing hollowly. This was used in a play by Zhao Yan Rong. He used this pattern while saying that he was going to heaven in a play called Beauty Defies Tyranny. Next is going to be the instruments that you hear in Yunjin's animation. The sounds that you hear after Yunjin finishes her animation, or if you stop midway, are also part of the pecking opera. They can be very smooth and relaxing. or all-out battle madness. The stage plays included instruments that you hear from Yunjin's animations, but here's what's going to stand out the most while using Yunjin. And this one. And this one. Along with many other instruments that are used in both Yunjin's animations, in Peking Opera performances, and even in Liwei's BGM. 
Now that I've soothed your ears with some music, let's move on to Yunjin's design. Yunjin herself carries some of the Peking Opera's many ornaments and costumes. Although her general design is stylized for the game itself and keep Peking Opera aesthetics very subtle, you can still see the apparent pieces of Peking Opera on both herself and her skills however. The entirety of Yunjin's design looks like a mix of both the traditional Peking Opera costume and the general form and look of the more modern Gothic Lolita inspired by Victorian era goth clothing. The term Gothic Lolita and its style was coined and popularized by a Japanese musician named Mana who if you didn't know was actually a guy. Gothic Lolita then became a Japanese trend that Victorian era enthusiasts and Mana fans or just fans of fashion in general took as part of their wardrobe. Yunjin's hat is called a bonnet which is inspired from the Victorian era style doll bonnets found in vintage dolls and even in modern dolls in current times. This is also part of the Victorian era Gothic Lolita style that many Japanese enthusiasts try to mimic. The Victorian era bonnet stem from the Scottish steel helmets, back then, generally any headpiece that is tied under the chin with a string was called a bonnet, regardless of the type or style. Looking inside her helmet, you can see these blue and pink puffballs. This is what's called the seven stars diadem or diadem. On more elaborate costumes, they consist of three rows of seven pom-poms each. They are also accompanied by really long feathers right at the top of the diadem itself. For Yunjin's design, however, the devs might have chosen the blue braids on her hair to mimic the effect of the feathers. During battle, the feathers shake and wave, giving the character the aura of majesty that they want to portray. If you play games like Dynasty Warriors or have seen Chinese action movies and other games, here's what they look like in combat. Yunjin's pink shawl is a discreet and subtle ode to the cloud shawl that is worn around the neck and is supported by the shoulders. This dress was once worn by all women in all levels, particularly in holidays and weddings. This could also be a design choice for gothic lolitas to show off the cupcake-like silhouette that they want to have. Next are the flags that are shown in her abilities. This is also a part of Peking Opera, and even in Chinese battle. The firm armor of the Chinese warriors are usually adorned with multiple flags such as these to indicate the character being fully armed and ready for all forms of combat. These flags are worn by both female and male characters within the battle, and other less elaborate forms are worn for ceremonies and social occasions such as of course the Peking Opera. At number 11, the hairstyle of the traditional female citizen of the old Chinese dynasties relied on the person's age, civil status, their respective jobs, and is even different when they're performing. Women who were single often wore their hair down with very simple styles in mind. Sometimes they have a ponytail with their hair in front parted right in the middle. Maidens below the age of 15 had their hair in braids until they reach adulthood. Once they do, they go through a hair pinning ceremony where their hair is washed combined in a twist, and finally pinned with what's called a G Li. By this point, they were now considered an adult eligible for marriage. Yunjin's hair, in contrast, has bangs in front and her hair on the back is let down with two braids of blue colored hair. For anyone simping on Yunjin, I can confirm that she is, of course, single. As for her age, I'm kind of spectacled because she still has braids. I also don't see the traditional G Li pinned on her hair. So it's very questionable. As for why the braids are blue, in Peking Opera or Jing Xing, colors are often painted on someone's face instead of their hair. Obviously, the devs didn't want to paint Yunjin's face, so they decided to paint her hair. And her blue braids probably symbolize Yunjin's slight rebelliousness in that she sometimes goes out to watch rock music with Xin Yan. Number 14 is going to be the bell-shaped dress of Yunjin. This bell-shaped dress is taken from the gothic Lolita silhouette that is usually worn by enthusiasts. If for some reason you want to join this trend, the general look of the dress is what's called the cupcake shape. Most gothic lolitas wear dresses such as jump skirts, bells, and line petticoats. If you ask me why I know that, I literally had to look up multiple dresses before I could find this style of dress. So if you know anything about these dresses or what they're called, 
Please help me. Moving on, Yang Sheng coins or Chinese numismatic charms refer to a collection of special decorative coins that are mainly used for rituals such as fortune telling, Chinese superstition, and Feng Shui. There are numerous Chinese charms ranging from different religions all the way to fortune telling and even battle charms. Yunjin's charm, however, could be again a stylized design choice made by the devs. Finally, Yunjin's boots are a type of leather boots called Shui. Or Shui, which were very common for nomads and people traveling between cities. These boots were also used in the Jin dynasty, so maybe Yunjin was a trendsetter for fashion and opera performances in Teyvat. The boots themselves are also part of the Gothic Lolita look the developers went for in her design. Not just boots, however, the Gothic Lolita style footwear includes doll shoes, horse rocking shoes, and platform shoes. Kimo, or stage props if translated, is the name for all stage properties and some simple decorations. It was first coined in the Jin dynasty, which if we think about it, Yun Jin and her lineage could really be the first trendsetters of Peking opera in Tibet. Kimo includes articles of everyday life such as candlesticks, lanterns, fans, handkerchiefs, and more of the like. And the prop that Yun Jin shows off is of course her spear, flourishing and twirling in both the art of stage play and in battle. The movement and poses don't really show a specific real life style other than her own unique set of flourishes. As intended by the devs, it is however a bit akin to the Monkey King twirls and spins in real life performances. Second to the last is going to be the pecking opera roles. Pecking opera consisted of four roles which depend on gender, age, and level within the said performance. Each role also has a subtype within itself that separates every category of role into their respective subtype. The first one being Sheng, representing the main male role, with multiple subtypes depending on the age of the Sheng, such as Lao Sheng, signifying the dignified older role, and Xiao Sheng for younger characters. The Dan role represents any female role within the play. And since it represents any female role, it has a total of 5 subtypes for different characters in each performance. Subtypes like Wu Dan and Dao Ma Dan, oh my gosh I butchered that <laughs> like crazy, representing the martial women and young female warriors respectively. And this is probably where Yun Jin falls into, both in her Jin Xing performance and herself in game. The third role which is Jing is specifically for male roles whose faces are painted, with varying levels depending on the color of paint. Anyone who plays the Jing role must have a strong, forceful voice and must be able to exaggerate his gestures and movements. Lastly, the Cho, the male clown role, which as the role entails, a comedic and mostly minor character, often the amusing, foolish, and likable character in the troupe, with the key tell of having a patch of white chalk on their nose representing their quick wit and secretive nature. And last but not the least, going back to their unique and dare I say distinct way of singing, Bai Jingxian performers is separated into six main types. These types being emotive, condemnatory, narrative, descriptive, disputive, and lastly, shared space separate sensations type of lyrics. Yun Jin's performance, if we could guess, is a narrative of a girl who became a hero, as said in the recent 2.4 trailer, but the new character Shen He or Shen Hu says that the girl in her story isn't as brave or daring as she portrays them to be. You can tell me if I'm wrong once we actually see Yun Jin's hangout and story. With all those props, costumes, stories, and intricacies put together, you have the graceful, talented, beautiful director of the Yun Han Opera House, stage Lucida herself, Miss Yun Jin. There we go, I've said every possible part of Yun Jin's design that I could fit into. I hope you guys enjoyed that pre patch video of Yun Jin's design. To anyone pulling for Yun Jin again, Yun Jin wanters will be Yun Jin havers. I myself really want to put her up until C6, but sadly, C2 is probably the best I'll get. Anyway, comment down below if you think I missed anything about Yun Jin's design or overall aesthetic. Also, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe as well as hit the bell icon to stay up to date to my videos. The uploads change because of priority but I just enjoy doing some over others. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just don't line up my videos correctly. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys later. Bye!